Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. Treats left out in the open for pets to grab during their walks, but what's inside is a danger that has police investigating. Good evening, everyone. I'm Kimberly Gill. I'm Devin Skillian. Police first got reports of marshmallows with sharp objects inside last spring. Well, recently it has gotten worse. It's in a neighborhood near 14 Mile and Farmington Road. Victor Williams live with what pet owners and police have to say about it. Victor. Yes, Devin and Kimberly, thankfully no animals or even little small children were hurt as a result of these marshmallows. But now the Farmington Hills Police Department is going to be patrolling more to prevent that from actually happening. Now we have to worry about nails and, and food. It's terrible. Kathy Curtis can't believe that someone, for whatever reason, is taking time out to put sharp objects in marshmallows, leaving them for whoever or whatever is unfortunate enough to have a bite. If somebody was angry at a particular neighbor's dog, I can't even imagine somebody thinking of it, but that's the only thing I could come up with. Farmington Hills Police Chief Jeff King says a motive is unclear, but a variety of marshmallows ranging in different colors and flavors were found in a subdivision near 14 Mile and Farmington. We've received uh, five complaints. There have been um, shards of metal, tacks, and even a fish hook in, in these. Police originally looked into the first complaint back in May of 2022, but the latest finding was just on January the 18th. The entire situation remains under investigation. The main focus is safety, safety of our residents, safety of their pets, safety of the children in the area. Until police are able to figure things out, Kathy says she's going to be very careful with her dog, Nico. I'm used to pulling him away from things, but now you gotta search for, you know, God knows what. And we're sure she's not the only one, but if you guys know anything about what's going on here, the Farmington Hills Police Department would like to hear from you. Victor Williams. Local four. Okay, Victor. After initially giving the project the green light tonight, the Gross Point School Board has scheduled a vote on whether to continue with the construction of a new health clinic inside one of the high schools. Mar McDonald is live in Gross Point Farms tonight on this story. Mar, that clinic would be constructed using school money and run by Oakwood Health. That's right, Kimberly. And the idea was that that clinic would be available to young people ages five through 21 residents of the points as well as Harper Woods being enrolled in Gross Point schools would not be a deciding factor. Let me show you. The idea of spending between 700,000 to a million dollars in district sinking funds to retrofit an old science lab at Gross Point North High School has been on the table since last summer. Initially, despite mixed public opinion, the board voted to go ahead. Tonight, the school board will be voting on whether to halt construction after questions about the legality of using those sinking funds have been sent to the board. The initial thought was building a clinic at the school would help lower income children get medical help regarding regardless of whether they had insurance. The district would pay to build the space out. Oakwood Health, which is Beaumont, would run the clinic, and the district would not be responsible for ongoing costs. Back here live, the school board meeting starts here in a little under an hour. The vote is going to be on a resolution that would halt construction on this until an alternate revenue source that was not taxpayer funded dollars could be achieved. We'll see where it goes tonight with this vote. We'll be back tonight at 11 to keep you updated. We're live in Gross Point Farms. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. We'll be looking forward to your reports later. Mara, we appreciate it. The hypothermia deaths of a Pontiac mother and her two young sons have raised all kinds of questions about what could have been done ahead of time to save those lives. All complicated by the fact that Monica Kennedy was in a mental health crisis. Police and several contacts with, or had several contacts with her in the days just before the tragedy. But what can loved ones do to help before it gets to that point? Sean Lay has been looking for answers on that. He joins us now live. Sean. No easy answers at all, Devin. Look, we're asked those questions today. The answers are call 911, take your loved one to an emergency room, or hold a family intervention. That's where we are on this right now. But what about going to court? We asked retired Judge Vonda Evans and clinical psychologist Dr. Rose Moten for those answers. What can a family member do legally? Can they step in? What can they do within the court system? When they begin to see things like that, they have to be able to, you try to call the police, but the police are like this. If we don't see that that person is a danger to themselves or others, 
we can't voluntarily take them into custody. Can a family member go to the courts looking for help can, for their loved one? You can try to petition the court, but here's the problem. That judicial official or and or the police, I mean, that judicial has to determine if that person is a, a threat to themselves or others. And many times, maybe the episode may have gone over and they can't find them. It's very challenging from what I've been told by members who practice in probate to have a person in voluntary commit. You've been the point person for yes. your family for this. I've been the point person family. I've been the point person for patients. You know. What did you do though for your family? What did you do at that moment? You have to call 911. 911 emergency room. Can you go to the courts? It's a process. You know, it's a process with the court. So it's not that you can just walk into the courts. Usually you have to start a, 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 a paper trail. What, your only job as a family member is to get your loved one to a facility where they will be safe and they will be cared for. Back here live. So here we are in January of 2023 and we asked the question. The first answer, Devin, is call 911. That's where we are right now. Back to you. So right, uh, it's such a complex problem. All right, Sean. It really is. Macomb County Prosecutor Pete Lucido is facing a whistleblower lawsuit from a former assistant prosecutor. It was filed by Joshua Van Lawn, who worked in that office for 11 years. In 2022, Van Lawn took part in an investigation that concluded Lucido had made inappropriate sexual comments toward employees and used race in determining people's assignments. Van Lon also refused to negotiate a harsher plea deal for a black protester compared to the deal offered to white protesters in the 2020 protests following George Floyd's murder. Van Lon says he was fired by Lucido as a result of those two decisions. The suit seeks compensation for lost wages and court injunction preventing further acts of discrimination, intimidation or retaliation. No comment yet today from Lucido. Spontaneous celebration today in Dearborn over a big soccer match. That's right. The Arabian Gulf Cup final took place today, and as Tim Pamplin shows us, the result had fans partying in the streets. It was a scene of absolute jubilation on the Detroit Dearborn border this afternoon as thousands of Iraqi Americans came out to celebrate their team, the team of Iraq, winning the Gulf Nations football tournament. It's taken 34 years for Iraq to do this. And the expats came out en masse. We won the Arabian Gulf Cup, Iraq are champions! The celebration stretched throughout West Side Detroit and the Dearborn border. At one point, police forced to shut down Greenfield Road as the celebrants did the slow roll around town. Even a big rig got involved. After being bombed so many times in our country, we still managed to get that win, man. And at the end of the day, it's my roots. You know, my parents came from here. I was actually born here, um, but, you know, I consider myself Iraqi American, so it's my roots. So, you and, know. And you're free to celebrate. 100%, you know, land of the free. Land of the free, indeed. So back out here, the celebrations, no doubt, will be going late into the night here in Dearborn. Congratulations to Iraq and all of these expats in our region. That is the scene in Dearborn this afternoon. Tim Pamplin, the local four. <laughs> Love the passion and enthusiasm. That's great. All right, well, we'll have to wait a little bit longer to learn what will happen to a work of Van Gogh art on display at the DIA. This is the piece of art that's the subject of an international battle. A Brazilian art collector claims the painting belongs to him. He says it was stolen and he wants the DIA to turn it over to him. The DIA says federal law prevents it from turning over foreign artworks. Today, the issue was in federal court. A judge strongly encouraged both sides to work it out before he issues a ruling. The written order is expected soon. Well, the gloom hangs around, yes. and so does a lot of the water that it's brought us here in the last couple of hours. But it's also made the temperatures a lot warmer mm -hmm. than what we usually yeah. see in the month of January. Let's get over to Kim Adams. Sorry, I did a little spin there because I was doing some uh, <laughs> some uh, storm tracking, which I don't normally do in January, but I'll let you know in a second just uh, when the rain is going to be in your neighborhood. It's coming up from the south, moving to the northeast. You can see some yellows in there indicating a few areas of heavier rain right now. 
And here's what I was doing, just tracking these storms for you. Uh, Lincoln Park, you'll get some rain here in the next couple of minutes. Melvindale, 613. Inkster, 616. Dearborn, Detroit, and Garden City all getting showers. Maybe even hearing the rumble of thunder here within the next 10 to 15 minutes. And this rain will continue to overspread Metro Detroit. But notice how thin the ribbon of moisture is. So. It's not going to rain for very long between now and about 9 10 o'clock tonight. We do expect showers, maybe a couple of thunderstorms, but the heaviest rain and severe thunderstorms are now down in parts of central Ohio and that is all moving off to the east, but there is this pink box here. That's a severe thunderstorm watch, believe it or not, for parts of central Ohio that will expire at seven o'clock tonight. But here in Metro Detroit, we're not expecting any severe weather. And in fact, most of what will fall will just be some heavy rain. And then at midnight, as temperatures start dropping, we could see a brief changeover to just some very light snowfall. If you want to keep up to date on when the rain will arrive in your neighborhood, the best way to do it is to go to your favorite app store, type in WDIV and download the forewarn weather app and then you get interactive radar right in the palm of your hand.